streak, and they are definitely looking like the best team in the world. And yeah, you can say Sumbi is the best coach in the world, but at the same time, the crowd wants us to talk about OG. That's so not where what's great about them? That's not where I was going, but sure, we're going to do that too. But I want to point out that every team has different needs when it comes to a coach. And you know, you look at Vichy Game, and they got ROTK, who's like taking a seat, and he's sure. he's the captain. He'll draft, and basically the players are his pawns, and it's working for them. Well, I mean, it was working yeah. for them. They were they still the, the previous major winners and in this case I mean in OG we have a unique story where yeah They needed to stand in and the coach is like sure I'll stand in and he keeps playing and he he wins the eye as a player Kyle, As a coach or what used to be coach and it's working for them And perhaps if you're talking if you're talking to Seb He'll say that being a coach for the team and then being a player for the team as well Just helped him understand the dynamics even more so so yeah. you know there's different sides to uh, different strokes for different to the folks yeah. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I was uh, I was hanging out with the Maneski Silencer and Fanatic guys and the consensus between like Kenshi, Ice Ice Ice, Ninja Boogie We're just talking you know it's you can be bad or good. Mm -hmm. No one knows until you're on the right or wrong team. You you are a product of who you play with. It's a team game. game. Yes. And that's also, you know, there were interviews done. I think Kuroki gave a really, he made a couple of really great points about how his biggest thing for, for Valve and the development of the public scene is to put more emphasis on Team Q. Please. Yeah. PPD said the same. Yes. No tell. I, I will say it. the same. It's yes. like, it, it is a team game. And you've got this sentiment in a lot of players, you know, in NA specifically. No one wants to play offlane. No one wants to play five. Everyone's trying to be the next superstar mid player, next superstar fourth position. Just, but it's a team game. Yeah, no one wants to play party QNA. If you actually go to your, you can get party ranked yeah. games occasionally in NA. You have to play unranked, and that, that's it. Like, no 5v5 there. That is true. Wow. Oh, we have a whole different opening huh. coming out from yeah. uh, Secret this well, time round. Same concept, though. It is, right? I reach plus Shaker against Pango. Mid one plus yeah. the App Swords. The, the same two heroes, but. I, I do look at the last two bands. Silencer, pretty respectful, but I like the bat, right? Yeah. So they ban yeah. bat when they're thinking monkey. I think Storm against bat is a bit of a, a wash, but Monkey King hates playing against bat rider. You actually don't even need a lasso him. If you see him in the trees, you pop Firefly and blink on him. He's now stunned for four seconds. I just can't believe in this, like, right now in this game, if we saw a silencer first ban, I would think you were crazy. And Puppy <laughs> just plays it so well one game, you're just like, uh oh. Yep. You gotta get rid of it. I think they also recognize how annoying it is to play Pango, because he's got this, like, delayed initiation. Yeah. So, at any moment, whether you ult before he gets the ult off, or during, as we saw, it still cripples him. Yeah. And it, it could still obviously be the, the Jarex Pango. Yes. Yeah. I like the Jarex Pango quite a bit, to be honest. Same. And I think you obviously, I don't think you ever want to put Monkey King... You don't want to put Pango versus Monkey King, do you, in lane? There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That is uh, most likely the no-tail profit. And, I mean, you're talking about the silencer being banned as a respect ban to Puppy. At the other side, you do have Team Secret banning out that Batrider as yeah. a respect to no-tail's Batrider in the first game of the series. I think it's to cover their change in opener. And I respect that Secret, even though um, the bans changed a bit, but it's still just the first big Pango, but they don't want to do the yeah. same opener again. You can't. It's, it's a very wise decision. I think the more inexperienced teams and also just diff teams of different styles. Like my boy Bulba. He wins a game with the draft and you give it to him again, he's going to dare you to beat him. And that's just a difference of opinion, of course. But I, I like the willingness to adapt that Puppy shows. The Jakiro ban. Yeah. The team fight. I mean, that hero, I'm, I'm still not the biggest fan of in lane, obviously. Dual breath is decent, but once you get that ice path maxed out, it's such an annoying hero to deal with. Like, you just almost always have the gotcha team fight ability. Yeah. It's really great synergy with uh, Shaker, because it's just super high reach on your two supports, and these really cheap stuns. Um, we saw VGJ use that, in the, or VG Gaming, rather, in the first game they beat Liquid. Yeah. It was the same concept. Um, even in the games, oh, uh, the Kunkka game, they're doing so well, just these easy repeatable stuns that allow you to start fights and then find an exit kill as well. Yep. I like, I like, yeah, yeah. You, you banned it last, but now you, you want to ensure OG doesn't get a free mag pick because it's great synergy. You have the profit to secure Anna's lane. You already have a Pango who does not mind having a power bonus no. by any means. And then the whatever Anna would want, um, like a troll, right? You could just mag troll and I think OG's lineup looks great.
Oh, agreed. No, nope. I mean this Pango. That I think I'm sure if you're the Pango, like you, you got a Banjo Cure because if you do have that Earth Shaker and the THD, like you just yeah. see him like starting to roll, and all of a sudden there's just a Fisher on top of you, and then Ice Path, and you're just locked down. Long range reach. We've always loved it. Yep. And OG. I'm trying to think, Secret will probably just take the Puppy Hero next, unless they want to block pick some Team core. Turn to I give it a troll. That's a uh, makes sense. Let's see if the, the life stealer gets banned out again. Yeah, Morph's still in the pool as well. Mm -hmm. The hard carry. Morph got last phase banned last game, right? Yeah, yes, by OG. Right. And uh, secret in this phase, they banned out the uh, Medusa and the Antimage, so they went for the for the hard carry bans as well. Obviously, they already Ten banned Mag now, so it's only going to yeah. be one of those two. And, and you have the Monkey King instead of the Storm, mm -hmm. so you Five now seconds. don't fear any mage at all. Okay. And if you want to pick it as OG, I think you almost dare them to, because Monkey King loves that matchup. Do you still fear Medusa? Not. Uh, Secret loves Monkey King also against the Dusa. That was okay. their... The lane is the lane, very, very yeah. good. But and the way he later. plays, though, because Monkey King can avoid um, terrain. Mm. And Medusa wants to play on this rotation of cliff to cliff in her own jungle, defending mid tower. Uh, the way mid one specifically plays Monkey King is very aggressive, and he gives you a ton of map control and dominates enemy jungle quite easily. Now, what I haven't seen for a while, I think, is a Nisha Medusa, and that's the hero that he grew big on. That was like the it's, first tournament of this yeah. year at the PvP esports. Yeah, it's, they he played it every time, and I don't know. They've just kind of fit? gone away. I. Or is it just uh, the the way of playing Dota changed? It could. I don't. Uh, we'd have to see more heroes. I think for Anisha Medusa, he's almost always the last pick for their team, and it, it's tough to say off a, a Pango and a Nature's OD, Prophet. O D ban. That was first twoed, or first banned overall, I believe, by O G in the first game. Yep. And that yes. means Morph is a possibility for Secret. Like a puppy smile. He's like, did did I really just get the easiest hero pick of all time? But he didn't pick it right away, so maybe not. I mean, he can use this time still. This is free time. Yeah. These uh, couple seconds. And it will be the Sand King, one of the most picked heroes this tournament. So many stuns on Secret. Yeah, we the, the combination of the Sand King and the Earthshaker has not been super successful, though, I must say. Yeah. But I will say, Sand King's a little bit like to Jakir, even though it's probably going to be a Zai Sand King, the, the Pango, just it's long range reach again. You just yeah. blink stun or even just stun. And it's nice to play around mid one. That's why I'm looking for Secret to last pick the Nisha hero. If they were going to take Morph there, they're going to last pick it. And it's going to be something that's uh, at maybe not a full hyper carry, but it's going to have to deal structure damage. Mid one wants to play a more active Monkey King than we'll traditionally see, specifically from like the Chinese region. And when you have all these stuns around the map, it means that wherever he ends up going to, you're going to be able to find the bounce and kill. Oh gee, with their drafted sword, I I hope this is a, a Jerex pain right now. But... Oh. New hero joins the fray. Oh, just scared. I I like the hero, but I'm always afraid when Team Secret have the team fight advantage. And I think yes. that they do at the moment, just because they have so many Absolutely. damn stuns. Now, when I see the lineup of Secret, I'm thinking, wow, this could be a great Rubik game, but I don't think it fits in OG's lineup anymore. Unless it's a mid. Rubik. Five ah, mid Rubik. No, I think, it, I I think mid Rubik is just garbage right now. Well, okay then. You want me to be, to be more decisive? I'll, yeah, that's Kyle? fine. Be honest. All right. Trust your feelings, Grant. Yep. And did you see actually when the bounty hunter got picked up, they showed mid one. He's like, oh, my game is going to be hell. Like, he knows, <laughs> right? He's the monkey king. Like, he knows he's a sacrificial lamb, but he's like, I am going to have a fun game. That. Yeah. I mean, that is a thing to do, right? We mid one definitely took control of that first game. If you want him to have a bad game, you got to put more people on the case. Yeah, and I think, obviously, just track against Monkey King, right? If you just get it off on him, you'll always know, because, as Kyle says, mid one likes to play the more roaming Monkey King. Mm -hmm. You just get a track off on him, that's a minute of his time wasted, almost. Hmm. And obviously, we've... I don't think I've ever seen... I think Puppy has played Sand King, but I think it's going to be Zai. We, I know DY has been playing a lot of 5 oh, Sand King, but yeah, they take the Puppy yeah. Hero. Yep. It'll be Oracle. Yeah, Oracle's still in the pool as well. Yep, and you have the... Now you have Hard Save. You still have a ton of Lockdown, and Nisha's Hero will be overall 22 pick. He gets to see the full spread of the OG lineup before he makes his decision. And, man, Oracle's one of those heroes that was super popular at the minor, and, like, it kind of came in popular to the major group stage, mm -hmm. and then, like, as the group stage, like, day two, three, and four wore off, it was, like, it was getting picked, but, like, third and fourth, not first and second, and 
even at the, the main stage, we just haven't seen it that much. We've seen it banned more often than picked as well. As in, yeah, just uh, just sometimes first phase banned, but then sometimes ignored. It's been a kind of a on and off. Man. Oh, gee, I think you you either you need a huge team fighter here and so does your last hero or you just got to go all in with this like split push weird style that OG does like to play. And they're taking a lot of time to think about this fourth pick. Yeah, both teams nearing uh, well about to be under 30 seconds of reserve time. Both captains using the full amount. They're in it's each individual move is taking a while because they're using all of their bonus time. Just cuz why not? Yeah. I wonder if Seb will ask for last pick hero again. Ooh! He might. It's the counter pick to the Monkey King middle, but I'm I'm a bit concerned just because, like, it's cool with the Bounty Hunter Furion concept because you look at OG's like mid game team fighting. The Quap can just move somewhere. Bounty's off map, invisible, could be anywhere. Prophet TP's in. Suddenly you've got four heroes and they just spam their spells. Somebody's dead. Yeah. But the concern is that much like when Quap plays against heroes like TA. Uh, Monkey King similar, where you do so much raw physical damage that if you miss Blink, or Blink's on cooldown, yeah. you get stunned, you are dead. And no matter how farmed you get, no matter what streak you've got going, like, one mistake will get you killed, especially when you look at the number of stuns on Team yeah, Secret right now. Sand King, Earthshaker, like, exactly. I don't think Quap can ever Blink, like, aggressively in a team fight. Always has to save it for mm -hmm. the end. It, it looks like OG's trying to outskirmish Secret, but that's so scary to me. I think they're, like, the best team in the world at that. And they just have really low cooldowns. Both teams have insanely low cooldowns, except for that Sonic Wave yeah. right now. I think it's going to be a fun game regardless. I agree. This no, is going like to be more blood of a bloodbath, for sure. Yeah. Oh, last time we said that, wasn't it, like, 5 True. to 5 at 20? And we're like, oh. <laughs> we're jinxing it here. I mean, that is sometimes the result, right? When you are expecting the other team to skirmish, and you have got the skirmish lineup as well, you rather wait for the enemy team to come to you, because that exactly. gives a, a bigger chance of them messing up, so that you can take advantage of that. I actually do think that... But, um, the Oracle is going to be very interesting to watch Puppy play this because his positioning needs to be spot on. There is so much movement on the side of OG and they really need to pick off Puppy before a fight. Like, if there is a skirmish, that Oracle needs to die. Yeah, and that was a great Naga ban from OG. I did not see that coming, but if Secret would have last picked that, it's actually just... I, I don't want to say game over, but... It's one they don't have anything for Naga. Hey, yeah, the new Naga is one of those weird, like, she loves actually skirmishing now because she can always reset the fight or just set up the fight for, think about it, Sand King, Earthshaker, like, there's five heroes in the yep. sleep, it, it's just over. A save behind I like that it. ban. Yeah. It's the new PL, because PL's just been nerfed. Most players don't consider it that strong of a hero anymore. Naga's just... Farms way quicker, too. Yeah. Man, so what is OG? They need to wrap They're it up. On time. They need to... Uh, I, I feel like this has got to be... Some sort of carry, honestly. Who, who's playing what is the question? I'm going to go with no tell Profit. I never... What is, I have no clue what's... Ha I think that might be a... I, I have no clue, it's Kyle. It's a core <laughs> bounty. It's a core Profit, and it's a core Quap. I think it's a Jerex Pango, a no tell Ench. They're going to try and play this cool concept where there's like one hero in each lane and like two constant roamers. Yeah. You can replace any of these cores with either of the supports for them to regain levels and XP. Secret's down to nine seconds and there's the there's, name. There it is. You called it. You called it at the start. I am just kidding. You want me to be more decisive? I think Secret will take this 2-0. I like their draft. I think OG is going to have to play out of their mind, yeah. which they can. If They have to do very well in the lanes. And the problem is Medusa is not a bad laner. Oracle's not a bad laner. Sand King's one of the yeah. best laners. It's it's a very uphill battle for OG, but the crowd believes in them, and that's yes. what matters. <laughs> this is... Uh... Oprin versus the mountain right here. You have an edge on OG. You've got more speed. You can make more moves around the map, but one mistake. One What's mistake that? in the Roche pit. One mistake around a tower. It's all over. Takes. Yeah, I, I gotta lead secret. OG, the thing is, OG could surprise us. If they get off to a huge lead, You're they, they could do this. all these people cheer for OG. Yeah, you dare go against the masses. Absolutely. Hey, you guys are crazy. I think this crowd is gonna fuel OG, and it is gonna be... And it's gonna be uh, a, hey, a bloodbath from minute zero. If they win, it'll be incredible to watch. Oh, yeah. really well because they they have to dominate the map, and they they would just run over Secret. It's just that they have to keep running them over until it's GG. Yeah, and we saw last game like they did do very well in those skirmishes. They just didn't have the damage. And once again, it feels like they they could have a damage issue. But if that Quap gets some items, for sure.
Yeah. You gotta believe. You gotta believe in that third game of the series. Regardless, though, nobody's going home after this series because we're still in the upper bracket. But let's find out what's gonna happen in this game with OD Pixel and Tsunami. Thank you, Sheev. Yes, this game two between OG and Secret certainly looking to be a fun one. We're getting some different stuff there. OG, they are whooping out an Anna Bounty Hunter. What do you reckon? I don't know where it's coming from, but whatever the playbook they tried to go for in game one didn't pan out. And I mean, the chat wheel has been unmuted. The crowd has been unmuted. Right? Right? So let's go. Let's see if it is indeed enough to fuel them towards that game three as we'll get ourselves into the action. Game two, OG versus Secret. It's just not fair. So as the panel was sort of saying, Tsunami, for OG, they have to make everything work from the off, right? This is not a lineup that's going to play nicely from behind. No, and much like Kyle said, it will be amazing to watch if they can pull it off. I'm just as apprehensive as the panel is, but you don't pick an Ana Bounty Hunter unless you know what you're doing. And, you know, we were kind of questioning the tree protector in game one. It ended up being fine. That wasn't the issue. But now they've... they've Relocated the Pangolier's farm position. He's going to be on Jerax this time. You got Seb on a Nature's Prophet, Topson on a Queen of Pain. This is the kind of playmaking hero that I think he performs best on. Man, there's just so much playmaking potential right across the map. If they have that good start, sort of comes from the mid game, the way that they'll be able to react to any sort of play that Secret try and make is going to be unbelievable. The, the global potential with Picos from this bounty, Nature's Profit combo, easily able to sort of you know, have this Pango sliding in, Quap blinking in, so much go, go, go on OG's side. If they can get the ball rolling, they will find those kills, they'll get that gold advantage but it's going to require them to play at their best. As we saw in game one, Secret looking incredibly scary today. As they have been for the majority of this tournament already, down bottom, Anna is being chased down. Jingu Mastery is going to stack up. Is he fast enough to get himself away? He's trying his best to run away. As they'll find one more route onto him, under the tower they go. Melee range. And first blood goes towards mid ones. Mid ones, Monkey King, no tell. He's sort of trapped here in the trees, but the fisher will actually keep him on the right side of it all, so he will not go down. And this is how they are going to start the lanes off, of course. Having mid one down here in the bottom lane and putting that Medusa in the middle lane and in the hands of Nisha. It's top. Yeah. Top lane, however, Zai, who's out on his own. He'll be, the, he'll be going down to these two. He's got to watch out. Those quick sort of plays they can make between the two of them, starting Jerex up top with Seb. They have kill potential, especially when Zai is solo lane and on these early levels as the Sand King. Yeah, but Zai is used to this treatment. We saw it in the puck in game one. He was oftentimes left alone. This time it may be a little bit more difficult having to deal with a Pango and just the range harass of a Nature's Prophet is now no-tail. I mean, just gets run down here by Yapsil. Puppy TP's in. And no-tail's gone. Does draw away a bit of attention from that bottom lane, but Nana on his own is up against mid one. So even without the support backup, mid one can look to just pressure, get the stacks up. And Enchantress needs to be here. One of the main reasons why they picked this Enchantress is so that she can dispel that Jingu Mastery buff off of the Monkey King. Anna, he's just dead. They straight up splatter him with the Fisher. He has to be careful in that bottom lane as this bounty very squishy early on. And these three heroes, between the roots, the stuns, and the damage output of mid one's Monkey King early on, he's got to be careful. No tail, rooted up. We've got the surrounding upon him. Ooh, does have the central stuns to stop them, but it doesn't oh. matter. Boundless strike from mid one. This bottom lane is getting a little out of control in just the first two minutes here. Secret just getting kill after kill. And now Enchantress's TP is down. Ana getting a little bit of harass off of the Monkey King, but you're not going to be able to keep up with this. Mid one has boots already. He's got the stout shield. Ana has an orb of venom. And believe me, he's not right-clicking anyone to get value out of that. Not at this stage, at least. And we're seeing in the mid lane, Nisha having that little little lead at the moment. Eight for seven against the five for two. I'm going to say a little, it's a fair you know, wave of denies. With that illusion rune, it's not going to be any easier for Topson to contest Ooh. the farm. He's got to be careful. And Fisher! Oh. Yep, so you let him have it again. We saw what he did in game one. Game two, they pick it up in the draft. It doesn't, doesn't get taken out. And he's already off to just as good of a start, Tsunami. Just as good. He started out with the boots. Last time the benchmark for him finishing off that soul ring was at four and a half minutes. 
but mid, I mean, the top and Queen of Pain was forced to skill up that blink. He was holding on to it in case oh. he needed it. Now bot lane. Banana. These fissures. They've got the roof. They've got the sentry. Another kill for Yapso. We said that OG has to play fast secret. They're just playing infinitely faster at the moment. The top lane being the only place really where things are going good for OG, where Seb is getting free farm on his profit. He'll have to make a lot happen around the map. They are going to need him to make some big plays when it comes to stopping Secret from getting these kills after kills. Because these other two lanes starting out pretty miserably for OG. Still in that middle. Six for four on Topson against this 13 for nine. He's falling behind. You know, the problem with having a profit at such a high farm priority as Nisha has taken a fair amount of abuse from these two points in Shadow Strike. But with the mana shield should be fine. So whenever you have a profit and a high farm priority, which is one of the reasons why we're seeing support profits, is that you're not as willing to teleport from lane to lane. Maybe once the sea treep wave comes up, then you'll start helping out with pushes. But for ganking with like spouts and stuff like that, you won't really see it that frequently. So despite the profit getting this farm, it's still up to Jarex's pango to roam from lane to lane as he does stop by mid, but doesn't find anything. Nana down bottom still trying his best to get the CS, but has to risk each time coming out. But that Jingu Mastery stacks are going to be allowed for, for mid one to get them up. So he's having to play around very carefully anytime he gets hit a couple of times by the Monkey King. And especially so with Yapsor down in once more, Anna. There's the Soul Ring at four and a half minutes. Yapsor is hitting his benchmarks. Mid lane, Nisha. Pulling very low. They do get another dagger out. He has a Fairy Fire and a Tango. Should be fine. Although Puppy does not have any points in the Fates Edict. Oh, he's trying to deny it. Oh, he does. He thinks the Nisha is, is going to die to this. Right. And uh, we will send him back to quickly to base. It's the safer play. Yeah. Dead for 10. I'm sure Puppy did the maths. I knew that Nisha would not be able to survive that. Or at the same time, it's also valuable. Should we take him out of the lane for a bit? But he gets a free real fuel back at base. Doesn't oh. need to use the south that he just got sent out. Excuse me. Let's look at this river, please. Oh, oh he's angry right now. They are turning it up here. OG. I think you're going to need they more than one to. kill before you can fill the river with blood, though. They've, they've got to find something to fuel themselves here. As this first five minutes has got to be a bit disheartening for OG. Losing these de deaths very early on. The net worth, though, is keeping even. And as we say, Seb, he is rolling in the gold up top. It's Nature's Prophet finding a very easy lane, as expected to be. But we'll see what he's able to do with it. Now comes the early movements. TP's into middle, but Yapsu's there to respond. Fisher's out. Seb is kind of trapped here too. Still trying to keep the damage in on Tanisha. Yeah, Seb? Minute movement was pretty telegraphed. Going with the siege creep wave, he wants to go for some sort of rotation. Goes for mid, but Yapsu and Puppy are more than ready. Wait, I want to check out Seb's inventory. Let's, let's see what's popping in here. Am I, bl am I blind? Is that the face Double boots? Dust. No, face boots face and boots. boots. Is that is that oh, a no, that's Jarex's boots. Oh, that's Jarex's boots. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. Right. He's delivering a TI winner, yeah, all right? And I'm a TI caster, and I didn't realize that wasn't his boots. But yeah, he's delivering it to Jarex. That makes much more sense. The global courier. Ain't nothing wrong with that bot lane, though. Hey, uh, something wrong here for OG is, or maybe not. Mid, mid one's low. He did try and play on the fact that he would get those Jingu stacks up. And he didn't, so he will hide. Anna. See if he can maybe hunt him down, but mid one's getting underneath the tower. I'm surprised they're not planting more sentry wards in this bot lane on the side of Secret. Seeing as how many kills Yapsor got, I mean, I, obviously this is Yapsor we're talking about. This man does not build support items. He's just going to build aggressive items. But mid one is really not crushing the bounty hunter as much as I was expecting. I mean, it's still pretty bad, but this is a bounty hunter who gave up like three kills in the first few minutes. But Yapsor is doing a perfectly good job at keeping him at bay. A mid lane, Thompson. He has hit the six. He's got that kill potential with the Sonic Wave. So we'll surely have his eyes on those side lanes for, for any quick TPs into turnaround plays. But still has to somehow find the, the catch up in farm. And it's going to be hard. This dude's uh, able to hit the jungle and get the free farm. Bottom lane, they get the lucky shot procs. I won't be able to dive in mid one. Hit him behind the trees. And able to soak up the XP and potential farm with the wave being pushed into the tower. We'll keep the farm going good. I do still try for the wraparound, Jarex. Let me see if you can find some sort of setup. Set TP's in as well. The Triants are out. They're looking for mid one. Watch Buckle attempt. It's Sprouts there, but mid one quickly bites his way out of it. TP's are coming in from Secret. This is a scary place now for OG to be. It's Seb. He gets taken out. Diving a little too deep. Seb's gone. See if they can follow for more. No tail. We'll be fine with the heal as he backs off. 
They've got to be careful. OG trying to make these plays happen behind the tower. Secret, they're not going to let it go. OG are crawling for some sort of plays, some sort of lane that they can feel comfortable in. There's now Zai finds Jarek. He's just having a walk up. The swashbuckle is there before the Fisher. And it's a good job so as well for Jarex, as he will survive. But uh, playing a little risky there. Just holding himself in position, sort of soaking up the stuns. Set back to the top lane, keeping that farm going. Thing is, I don't know what Anna's game plan is. Normally, as a you know a hard carry player, you're like, okay, well, I'm making space. Bounty Hunter is not a hero that you often have to make space for. It's typically the other way around that Anna walks into the sentry. Seb is there with the dust and a good nature's wrath as well. Tracks her out. They look to Yapsaw. They have lost the, the Enchantress, but they're finding one kill. Tracks out on Zazai as well. They'll be able to find two. The power of the bouncy getting this early bit of track gold. Double track kills for OG. Will close that little bit of a gap in gold that Secret did have the lead with. Easy 1.2k net worth. And these are the sort of moves that we have to look out from for Seb. Ready to have that backup. Nature's Wrath as well, you cannot underestimate the, the potential bounces, the, the damage that can build up in the early game as Seb's able to hit the bounces right. The damage that can build up and also a good way to keep an Earthshaker Blink Initiator under control. We've seen time and time again in these series as Jerex and goes down by Puppy. Sticks around a little too long on his own there. They do find Nisha up and Nisha very low. That shrine's not up for three minutes, but... See if they can bring back up in Seb. TP's across, Nishik does get another snake out. Can they kill the kid him off? They can! Sonic Blade's there for Thompson! They'll get the kill, but they lose Anna! Up he's picked up a second kill, can they have the control for Seb? No tail here as well, they're still looking for mid one, he is, they have the vision. But he'll jump himself away, they'll look to Puppy instead, Puppy will fall! Thompson jumps in, he's still got his eyes on mid one, mid one, go to the TP out, and he'll get out of there. Not enough burst to come out in time to kill him off. But OG now starting to get some kills, allowing the pressure to build up onto that top tier one tower. Ten minutes in, Yaps are hoping for the top rune. And he will find it here. Double damage for Jarek. Oh, he's in. He steals it. The lucky shot pop with the silence. Yapso in trouble. There's a track. Anna's here as well as no tell to chase down the Shaker. This is another track kill surely for OG. And there we have it. More money here. Rolling in with these track kills. OG getting mobile and regaining control of the early game. Let's go. They got to keep this pace up. Normally against Medusa, you've got yourself, you know, a fair amount of time. But with the Bounty Hunter core, his job is to give you money. So Thompson, he just blinks immediately in past the tour and He's ready to go, but there's the stone gaze. OG, they've got to back out. Echoes that pop. They're looking at Thompson. Fisher's out as well. Thompson, he's deep and he's dead. No tail dead as well. Two full. A secret. They may be able to even find more. They jump in towards Anna. They have the episode of going. Anna is fast, the little shot block throws them down long enough to buy Anna the space to back off. Mid one still trying to chase down Seb, Seb goes for the Cell Sprout, he still has the balance strike, Seb in a lot of trouble, Anna can do anything to help him, there's a burrow strike onto Anna, they're going to turn towards him as well, swashbuckle from Jarex out onto the two of them, no tails coming across, but mid one jumps in with a primal spring, kills off Anna, Jarex potentially in trouble as well, he has swashbuckle in a couple of seconds, he's trying his best with the juice, but the burrow strikes there from Zai, Jarex is dead, no tail, now the focus tops and back in, canning off with the backup to turn this one around, he'll jump towards Zai, they're looking for this kill, buyback from Jerex as well, they want to punish Secret for coming this deep, but mid oh, still primal. going, Primal spring in, Seb's in trouble, Seb's out of the game, triple kill for mid one, bonus strike from Zai, set up for more, it's oh, going to be no. more, more dying on OG, Secret picking up kill after kill after kill. Despite the buyback from Jerex, they could not turn that one around OG, as Secret is just unable to walk into the OG's half of the map and take everything. As the panel said, this is not the kind of game as a Queen of Pain where you can just jump in all willy-nilly, especially underneath the Tier 1 tower. Stone Gaze was popped, immediately OG realized that they had a mistake, but Secret have too many items, the, the Sand King is too mobile with his maxed out Burrow Strike. He's catching up to all these targets who try to escape, and OG give back so much of what they had built up just a few minutes prior. And just stun after stun after stun, the chase is so huge as well from Secret with these long-reaching spells. The fishes, the roots flying out from Puppy, Boundless Strikes, Primal Springs, they can gap close so well 
on, on Secret's lineup. And there's no especially tanky hero on OG that's okay being the one left behind and okay stalling out. Everyone is super squishy on the side. And here's of them. the jump in the mid. The Fisher. It's the root. Pound this trap will be used at the same time. It doesn't matter though. They still get the kill. Topson's dead. No tail stuck in the root coins. Come on. He cannot run himself away. Or can he with the heal? He will. No tail does survive. Anna in the midst of it all. Tracks out onto Zai. They'll jump in. Diving the tower. Pro trap inside. In with the primal spring. Napsal have the control. Anna surrounded. Anna's dead. Seb as well. Can he escape this? Can he find something in return? He's trying to be out with the disarm. Oh. From Puppy. Stops him from killing up the oh. shaker. Seb will fall. fall dead on OG. It's now 21 to 7 for Secret. A Secret steamrolling down the middle lane looking for the tier 1 tower. They should be able to take it without any response here as OG, the majority of them dead at the moment. As a 4k lead comes out, the Secret starting to, to look like a bit of a repeat of the, the, the performance they brought in game 1. The way that Yapsor and Mid-1 play these heroes, you'd think Fissure and Boundless Strike were hero targetable every single time. They're collecting multiple heroes, making it so easy for Secret to just follow up on this stun disable. They're just hitting perfect lines. With the, as you say, just blocking them off, trapping them in. Boundless onto Seb, Seb. Off the Nature's Wrath. And we're starting to poke behind the tower. They've nearly taken this tier 1 tower, OG. Fortification comes out, and Zai trying to break away with that bow strike. OG a little hesitant on diving for more. Tops has fallen for that before, and he won't fall for it again. They'll let Secret back away, as so OG do clear up that tier 1 tower in the mid lane. They'll get an objective, and they will smoke up. Maybe see if they can get something else out of this, as Topson will bottle an Arcana rune, Ar Arcane rune, and he has got Sonic Wave. So ideally, he wants to make a play. And I'm glad OG are playing this way. Sometimes after you give up a few kills, you get very discouraged, and you're like, maybe, maybe I should just farm up this one item. But they have to keep slamming their head against the wall if they want to beat this Medusa. It doesn't matter how badly things go. If you go late, it's not going to work out. Bounty Hunter is only useful if you're getting kills. You just have to keep on going, hope that you can get some trades. Otherwise, you're just destined for failure if you just sit back and farm. It's bottom. Set. Toying around with the idea of coming in, but it's still a very hard kill. Even with two cores down, both Topson and Seb cannot really kill that Monkey King. Topson's gonna leave. The rest of OG's gonna start moving up top. And you know that Zion Yapso are potentially separated from the rest of the team. Zai actually jumping in with a bow strike. Fish is there to follow up onto No Tail. No Tail, can he get the heal off? He cannot. No Tail's dead. They'll get the first kill. Swashbuckle into the lucky shot. Prop Jarex will set up for the kill in return on Zai. They'll take that one. Losing support, but gaining a core. Seb looking towards the TP, but. He's a little too far up the high ground, Yapsil, so Yapsil will get away, but the OG are keeping pressure up on these lanes. And Seb will force down this tier 2 tower on the top lane. Fortification comes in. Secret, will they try and hold this? Yapsil's in the neighborhood. So is Puppy. It looks like they'll let this one go. So OG, they are taking towers. They are taking some map control. Bottom lane. Silence Puck is there onto Nisha. Nisha, very isolated at the moment. He pushed this out on his own. He has got the stone gaze. Trying to hold them back. And that will proc through the magic immunity. Freezing Jax in position. Anna leads for it. Nisha has to back up with Puppy and Yapsor. They'll go for the route. Nisha, stick charges, keeping the mana up. As he's too tanky of a beast for OG to tackle and at this point in time. And Secret, they want to strike back. Lead him from Zai. Bow strikes out straight away onto Anna. That's the safe lane and gone. See if they can jump in for more. Nippon with the chase potential. Has the primal spring down onto Nota. Boundless as well. Nippon now godlike on his monkey king. A Secret keep the trades favoring them heavily. Blink dagger now done on Yapsil. It's going from bad to worse, but Secret are playing it so well, and that's why it's happening. They're not willing to give up these one-to-one -one exchanges. Every fight is a team fight right now for Secret. Doesn't matter how important your Medusa is, you know, to let, back, let her sit back and farm. And sure, you're going to converge on her whenever she's getting ganked, but everyone is showing up, because if you give up one-to-one -one trades against the Bounty Hunter, the track goal will start adding up. Now Topson spotted out And yeah, they've got vision on him. Zai waiting for the opportune moment to jump in with the bow strike. The rest of the team's there with the backup. Topson caught out. Seb, he's also in trouble, jumping from mid one, he has a sprout, but they'll cut down the trees, surround him, kill after kill for secret, kill after kill for mid one. Oh, how are you going to do the boy like that? He's trying his hardest, but it, it, the window to be able to easily push down towers, sneak behind tier ones, take some objectives is closing. Because this one position bounty hunter, what's he going to do? Who's going to deal damage to towers? I mean, sure, that's right now. Anna even gets vision on Yapsor, but Yapsor just able to blink out. Anna can't even get the touch in to cancel the blink. 
as 26 to 8, 7K lead in a game where it was emphasized by the panel how important it was for OG to have a lead at the start. Not a stat you want to be proud of. Azana, eyes on secret up top. Still really unable to, to have made a big play with this Topson Klopp. So start to poke Anisha. Has to be very careful when he does so. There's no tell. We'll try for the wraparound. See if they can go for this. There is no two on top of his eye. He's got the epi. He's in with the power. On to Sev. Jump for the Primal Spring. Sev. He's going to go down. Thompson's blinked in for this one. Nisha low on mana. Low on help. But the false promise from Poppy. Keeping him safe. No tail. Taken down by the Fisher. Anna trying his best to run away. Can he hide in the trees? He cannot. Zai again jumping in. Burrow strikes there. Three dead again on OG. Secret keep everybody alive as their cause once again in this game too looking to be at a point where OG just cannot take a fight where the numbers are even even when they've got the o they, they, they are, they're able to outnumber Secret they just cannot kill these cores Secret are world class team fighters many team uh, tons of teams basically fear them for being the best in team fights oh, middle jump in yaps or no hesitation echo snaps down rolling thunder from Jarrett will be attempted to help him out Thompson but Thompson still goes down just dies too quickly at the moment on this underfarmed Queen of Pain. And Jax, will he actually be able to get himself away from this? Zai's got his eyes on him. There's the power strike. Boundless from mid one. Two more kills for this Monkey King. Mid one. 14-0-8 here in game two. The action just doesn't stop for secret phase. Echo Maelstrom. This Monkey King is out of control. And I don't know when it starts getting better for them. Right now, Ana is working his way up to a Solar Crest. At the time that he completes it, Monkey King's not even going to need his own hero. You can just kill him with Wukong Command Soldiers. And the Absol is in. And again, they just don't stop finding these pickoffs on the map any time that OG come out alone. And any time OG group up and try and make something happen as a team, Secret seemingly too far ahead for OG to come out on top of these actions. As Seb walks into a bit of a surprise, Secret's there, ready and waiting. Okay, yeah, Bandwagon is on the, on the OG team, right? Because it seems like everyone on OG is tracked 24-7. It really does. Secret knows every single movement that OG's been making so far. No tell, quietly prancing around, little does he know. He's not getting out. Another. A secret, 34 kills at 20 minutes in. Thompson. Oh, Thompson. He'll live today. It's a different story this time around. I mean, Willie, they are continuing to chase him. He's got Blink back up in a couple of seconds. He's only level two Blink, so the cooldown's still pretty low. Oh. And he'll have it out. Zai. They are going to still continue to chase this, I'd imagine. And they do find oh. the Fisher. Yaps or... He didn't even have vision there, just hitting it, straight blind. Secret. They want to keep this highlight reel going. They're into the jungle of OG. OG just have to make sure that they get right away from this. Jarek swashbuckling out of this. A yep. secret will keep that pressure on. Look for the tier 2 down bottom. Zai up to the cliff, getting the vision. I don't see no tail. They're just making a montage of skill shots. It's nearly impossible to play a Queen of Pain in, in the, under these conditions. It's nearly impossible to play any of these OG heroes under these conditions. But they set themselves up for this. They did. They, they went for this draft. That had, or could have potentially had big impact if they were able to get those plays, get those lanes, but they just couldn't. Bottom lane with this safe flame bounty onto mid lane with tops and Queen of Pain just went off to a disastrous start. Only Seb was able to find some lane where he could get the farm. He's still up there in net worth, but struggling himself to keep up, of course, with both Nisha and Mid One. These cores barreling out of control. 13k net worth advantage. And Thompson. Echo Slam? Again, yeah, so. So much setup, so much catch and control. If they see you, they will kill you. Heck, even if they don't see you, they're gonna kill you half the time. Azana, he'll show himself. They're diving the tower. Fisher from Yapso will uncharacteristically be he off the mark. So Anna, Anna will escape. Unbelievable. He's getting kicked. He's getting kicked. <laughs> Guaranteed.
Naps has got to step it up, you know. And you'd After think that game one, he's got high standards to live up to. I, I don't blame him. I mean, what's he doing on the, the all eight, two, and nineteen on the shaker? That's pretty, pretty good. They found another set. Has found himself up. He's trapped him in, but he's trapped him with them. As this, this, it's getting pretty messy, tsunami. You'd see the stat line and you'd think, oh, clearly the, the Medusa's on the Radiant side, right? There's no way the team with the Medusa has 37 kills to the 8 of the Bounty Hunter team and the Queen of Pain team. Ana just feverishly looking for something. Pull him and No-Tail smoked up. Jerax as well. Topson trying to be the bait. But Secret's not even interested. They're just pushing top tier 2. And with the items they have, the farm, the secret has, they can push that a whole lot faster, of course, than OG can ever. Zai blinks in, jumps into the midst of the ball, is the TP back up. As soon as secret see that there's heroes around, they're straight back. OG's got to get out, and it tries for the TP, but it will be cancelled, trapped in by the Fisher. He'll try his best to run, but the Boundless is out. This time, Puppy, he'll take the kill. How do they keep finding them? Yapser immediately blinks onto his TP location. Gets the enchant totem. As Thompson, the sonic wave into a sonic goodbye. As Thompson dead once again on the Queen of Pain. God, we will have a pause here. <sighs> this is painful to watch. I needed it. I was still having that discussion on why Yapso missed that Fisher. And now he's playing bugs, you know. Bugs. Yeah, it was just a bug. My bad. But OG. They have a mountain to climb if they are to turn this one around. 39 to 8, 24 minutes in 17k lead. As Yapsaw massively breaking ahead from the average. They let it, I mean, we saw what he could do in game one. They let him do it again in game two. They let that shaker through, OG. And it's certainly biting them in the bottom. This is not looking good at all for OG. This is looking like Secret at their best and definitely you can imagine the other teams watching at the moment that are left in the competition. They've got to take close note of what Secret's doing to make sure that Secret isn't able to do it to them as well. It's just I don't know how much you can extract from this either. I mean obviously Secret is playing out of control but the draft from OG like it's possible that they knew that you know if we if we go for an even draft Secret are just going to beat us based off of skill because I mean Secret is looking like the number one team in the world right now, whereas OG, they beat VP and it looked really good. They completely destroyed VP actually in this grand span of like 40 minutes for the entire series. But Secret's a different beast and OG may have felt that the only, only way we can beat them is by trying to do something different that Secret has never seen before. Unfortunately, this one position bounty hunter is just not the answer. This is the bottom four net worth bounty hunter. As OG, I mean, maybe, I mean, high ground defense, is that any good really for OG's heroes? I mean, not really, is it? No, I mean, it's, as OG tends to do, I imagine they are just going to cut waves. It's got to be about the split, about the wrap. Exactly. It's the only way. Sep, Zai's on him. Sprout up and a TP away. Nice. But indeed, Zai, he's got the control. Fisher as well from Yapso, making sure that there is no escape for this Prophet. Played him like a fiddle. Used the Quelling Blade at the beginning of the lane phase. Held on to it until now, just for situations like that. Into the Roshan they go. Midbon's already got his eyes out on mid. Swashbuckle to jump out from the trees. And Midbon able to walk back away. They will chase. Rolling Thunder's out. Puppy's able to false promise immediately. On to Midbon. They can no longer kill this Monkey King. As he'll jump up, Jax, Swashbuckle's out, but Midborn reads him like a book. He's already in position to kill him off after the Swashbuckle. They also catch No-Tail. This face Cedix is just going to be impossible for OG to deal with, even whenever they do think that they have a call. Oh, and Zai, indeed, dust out, Anna in the river. Can, oh, can he run? No, he cannot. Yours is out. Midborn wants to kill, Puppy will take it, he's the boss. As Nisha just continues to work on Meanwhile. <laughs> now Nisha's been having a chill game, only 1, 2, and 10, hasn't really been involved, and that's the scary thing, he hasn't needed to. It's casual you, Scotty at 25 minutes. Yeah, you, you add the Medusa into the mix, and it's gonna get a whole lot worse for OG in these fights. 
How much worse can it get, Owen? It's 8 to 43, Roche, take it. Oh, I got no, some views. And another one. And another one. This kingdom needs no queen. Sort of running out of things to say, Tsunami. There's only so many ways you can say OG's dying. How are you gonna disrespect the French audience like this? OG struggling on the main stage, but hey, maybe as Chief said, this is all part of the greater plan. You know, OG just wanting to give the fans more game and go for the lower bracket. Okay, run. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope so. Because if they're trying to play Dota, it is not looking that way. I know, it's the absolute zai. They found seven, no tell, no tell. Trying to hit out some impetus. A bit of damage onto Yapso. He's pushing Yapso away. And this time, Secret won't actually get the two kills that they jump in for. Seb's able to TP out. They should get no tail, though. Who controls out? No tail dies. Yapso, wicked sick. That has no tail. Zero, four, and four. Not his finest moments on this Enchantress, but. Not his finest moments at all for any of the members on OG in this match. Definitely one of the roughest games they've had in quite some time. Yep. A secret just proving to be on another level entirely in this series. And this would have been the true benchmark. Like, VP was signs of life from OG. They're like, maybe this is it. Maybe this is their com coming back in their TI form. And secret is one of the most formidable opponents you could possibly face against. But this is not a good look at all. This does not inspire confidence in their drafting capabilities. Nisha just standing there, taking the tier 3. Base now exposed. Nearly hitting that 1k a minute gold lead. Team Secret here this match set. Trying his best to keep pressure out on those side lanes. A secret quick to return the pressure straight on top of him. Thompson blinks out. As Nisha stands his ground, Japso's in with the control of Dust as well. On to Anna. Anna will have the move speed to get away. Set by his back. I mean, two of the secret heroes aren't even here right now. Mid one's farming the Radiant Jungle, and this Medusa's just chipping away. All she needs is this Oracle and this Earthshaker. Mid one finally jumps in. And makes his appearance known. And Thompson, as soon as he's in, he's straight back out. The Mibrag's getting taken down. Thompson buys back. Zai being healed up by Puppy. No tail. Walks into the front line of fire. Immediately gets shredded. The bottom lane now focused by Secret as they move across. Keep pushing on. They know that there's no stopping. There it is. That's GG. Good. Let the pain and suffering end for OG as Secret take this upper bracket match 2-0. Yapsor finishing in style with a nice free man of Echo Slam. Team Secret, ladies and gentlemen, arguably the scariest team at the moment in Dota 2. They will go on the main stage and they will do this to you. They will absolutely crush you.